since, based on what I've said, time is shorter than what we've lived. The effort to get what we've gotten in the past should be also shorter. And also, if we do live long, do we have the quality of life to enjoy what we get? I've seen people come in on wheelchairs with billions of dollars in the bank, billions, not millions, billions, huge pockets of land. They, they can't feed themselves, they can't drink, they can't clean their own pee, they can't even walk, they're not even mobile, but they have all this money and everybody controls them. Everybody tells them what to do. Everybody makes them sign things they don't want to sign. And if they don't sign, they don't get taken care of. And they're totally, nearly immobile. Even a glass of water to drink is so difficult, yet they have millions in the bank. So them working their whole life getting that has resulted in that. Perhaps the actions that they did during their lifetime resulted in that karma. Or, what's the point to have millions in the bank? And then you, you, you spent your whole life making these millions and billions. And then at the end, you can't even have it. You're alive and you're living long and you can't have it. You can't have it. And you can't even control it. You don't even have a say to where it goes. I've seen people recently, recently, just a few months ago. And I'm amazed. I look at them and say, what a Dharma teaching. The only thing I can do for them is plant some seeds in their mind, recite some mantras, give them something precious that they will touch and plant seeds in their mind. That's all I can do for them. Because I already know they're not going to go to a good place. I already know. They're not going to go to a good place. If you look at their actions. Why? The signs are already there. So if they have spent some time in Dharma or transforming or giving up attachments, even if they reach that state, when they die, they can go to a good place. And is that what we want? A good, a good death, a good bardo and a good rebirth? Isn't that what we want here? That's what I want. There's nothing left. There's never been anything, actually. So therefore, we can give up, we can give up things that create unhappiness in our minds and things that create unhappiness in other people's minds and focus on what's important, which is Dharma and attainments, if we meditate on these two points, these three points that I've explained to all of you. And if you really meditate on every single day, you take a few minutes out, think about it. You don't have to be formal. It will make a huge impact in your mind. Even if you know, don't know a lot of chanting and all that, it will still make a huge impact. <coughs> that is for sure. Not enough time to enjoy if we get, and not enough, uh, not enough time to put in the effort to get what we already got or to get what we don't got. And if we get it, we can't really enjoy it anymore. And if we can still enjoy it or have it, what about the people around us who don't have much time? Do we want to have a good time in Ibiza and then they're, they're hanging out in a wheelchair somewhere? That makes us a great practitioner. Hi, Tara. I'm a Buddha too. I don't think so. Those are very cruel, nasty, harsh, invasive, and extremely rude meditations that I've shared with you today. Why? Because they make you wake up. And they make you look deeper and say, oh, I'm not as pure as I portrayed myself to be. See, for some of us who say, uh-oh, that's really me. Some of us say, oh, they'll know that's me. Different types of people. Uh-oh, they're going to know that's me. I lost face. You've been in samsara longer than you've been in Chinese. So you should not, you should give up this Chinese hang up of face. <laughs> yeah. You've been Chinese for 20, 30, 40 years. Why is that imprint so strong? Just give it up. Who cares what you look like? But you've been in samsara longer. You've been in Africa. You've been in America. You've been, you've been in Australia. You've been in Indian. You've been in Tibetan. You've been a yak. You've been a dog. You've been many things. And all these lives, you didn't care. You were a beggar hanging on a street naked. You didn't care what you look like or whether your skin's wrinkled or, you know, whatever. So why be so attached to some of you here who are Chinese? Not me, because I have double eyelid, remember? Anyways, um, some of you who are Chinese here, who have this very great attachment to face and how you look, really give it up. It's only been 20, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. But you've been in samsara longer. So why are you so attached to a few years imprint, a few decades imprint, and not to a, a stronger imprint? How do you open up the stronger imprint? By meditating on what I told you then the imprint from your previous life will open. If you keep conditioning this imprint, this condition will remain open and you create the fuel for it to keep burning. There's attachment. 
If you meditate on what I told you, you will open up the, it will be the environmental cause for your previous life's karma and this life's prayers and mantras and service and devotion that you've done to open up to think another way. Whatever you've done in this life towards the Dharma is not wasted. It is there ready to ripen and to open. How? By meditating to create the causes for them to open up. So some people say, hey, I've done all these pujas and prayers and I've done these retreats, why no, why no result? Of course there's result. Make it happen. Everything you want to make happen in your mind will, create, will need an environmental cause. That means the thought and the push. You need environmental costs. That's why there are people who live in a rich country like Malaysia, and they're still losers. They don't want to push themselves and do more. They don't open up the costs. That's why there are uh, uh, people who live in very poor and impoverished countries, yet they can become super rich. Why? Because they push open the result. They, to be rich or poor is in us already from previous lives, but whether we want to open it or not. So if it's totally conditioned, it's totally conditioned, then everybody in a poor country must be poor, everybody in a rich country must be rich. Simple. It's the opposite, in fact. So if it's like that, you think carefully. It must be the effort. The effort must trigger that seed, bacha, or imprint to ripen. So if we're always worried about reputation, we're always worried about position, we're always worried about attractive, or wealth, if we're always worried about that and we keep feeding it, that karma opens and stays open. And it stays open strong. Why? Because we feed it. How do you counter it? By the meditation I told you. How do you stay doing Dharma work and focus? By the meditation I told you. Why? Is it mental hypnotism? No. It's reconditioning. Is it brainwashing? No. Brainwashing leaves you no will. Meditation gives you a will. In Dharma, there's no brainwashing. Why? You are not put under a spell and told what you do when you wake up. You just do it without thinking about it. Dharma is gradual. You listen to teachings. You read. You listen to teachings. You read. You contemplate. You listen to teachings. You read. One, one month, two months, you change. You attend more. You attend more. You attain more. You understand more. You understand more. You do more, more, more. What is that? That's reconditioning, not hypnotism or brainwashing. So by meditation, by teaching, you get a new view. If Doing more dharma as time goes on is brainwashing, then becoming a doctor is brainwashing. Then becoming a minister is brainwashing. Then becoming a dentist is brainwashing. Then becoming an artist is brainwashing. Why? You weren't one when you were born, but when you go to school, they tell you the benefits of it and they tell you how wonderful it is and, they, and you learn and learn and learn and then when you apply it, you do it. So when you're a doctor, are you brainwashed? Not logical. No, not logical. So therefore, if you're in Dharma longer, they call you a fanatic. Oh, you already went crazy. You know, look that you're a nun now. You're a monk now. Well, what's that? You're, you know, you should be a wife. You should be a husband. You should be, you should be a mother. You should be a daughter. You should be, you should be a prostitute, whatever you want to be. And then now you go into Dharma and more and more and more, we lose you, don't see you anymore. That's people who don't understand. They say, you're being brainwashed by the Lama. The Lama's hypnotizing you. Oh God, if I could, I'd be rich. I'd be rich if I can hypnotize you. I said, just open, put it in the bag. If I'm not rich, I'm not hypnotizing you. Because if I can hypnotize you, I'd be hypnotizing you for your money. What else would I want from you? Come on. If I can brainwash you, what do you think I would go after? That's right. So if you're listening to the Dharma, I'm not brainwashing you. I'm giving you logic and you are reconditioning yourself. So therefore, if there's analytical meditation, which is like that, or you're driving in a car, or you're riding around, except for chia, you're thinking, right? And you're changing and you're transforming. That's not brainwashing, my friends. That's reconditioning with new knowledge. I'm giving you logic. If you do more dharma as time goes on and your mental attitude transforms as time goes on and that's brainwashing or you become a religious fanatic. Then doctors and lawyers and all that are fanatics and they've all been brainwashed. What's the difference? So since I'm giving you knowledge and you're reading, you're reading and you're, you're getting tested 
and you're thinking and we're debating, we're asking questions and we get together, you're not being brainwashed, you're not becoming a religious fanatic, you're getting higher knowledge and you're applying it. It is not fanaticism. <laughs>